What's up, Miami Dog fans? September was nice, but we started in October off on some bullshit. First day of the month, and we lost. Last week, we scored 70 points on the Denver Broncos, and they scored 20. We almost lost by that same score in this game as the Buffalo Bills annihilated us 20 to 48. We went mano y mano with them in the beginning, trading scores. They score seven, we score seven. They score 14, we score 14. Uh, you know, in the beginning, but we got out punched this game. You know, they hit us with the knockout blow after that first punt. And it was just a matter of time before our defense got exposed. I mean, yes, we limited Denver to 20 points, but really 20, that 20 only looks good because of how many points we scored because we scored 70. But 20 points is still 20 points to me, you know, and the Chargers scored over 20. The Patriots, they scored points when it mattered against us. We weren't able to just lock them down and stop them the whole game. We were looking that way. We played better in the Patriots game, but it wasn't a shutdown defense. And in my defensive keys to victory on the preview video, I said that we needed to play press man coverage the whole game, and we did not. We played zone the whole game, and, you know, Vic plays a lot of shell coverage with deep safeties. We, you know, and, and I and I think the strategy in this game was to try to take Stefan Diggs out of the game. But whatever game plan he came up with to try to do that, he needed to throw that shit in the trash. Scrap that because that didn't work. Stefan still got his this game. And, you know, Ken Dorsey found ways to get him matched up on a weaker cornerback. And I'm not saying Kader Kohu is not a good cornerback. He is. He's a great cornerback for us. But he's not on the level of Jalen Ramsey or Xavier Howard. And we saw that Ken Dorsey motioned Stefan Diggs from Howard to Cater. And, you know, Cater, he got beat, you know. And, and Diggs is a tough cover, you know. Cater did the best he could. I don't think Cater played bad coverage. I just think Diggs is just like that. He's That's just who he is. And, you know, Xavier Howard usually is the one that's guarding him. But in this defense... It doesn't the 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 cornerback don't have to travel with the wide receiver. You know they can just stay there in their zone. And if he's gonna travel to Kohu, you know Kohu has to pick up his man and he has to do the same job Xavier would do. But that's being stubborn because you know that Kate is not on Xavier's level. So in the case, if we had Jalen Ramsey, yeah, he can motion wherever he want. It's still gonna be a tough matchup for him getting off the line of scrimmage on a jam or he's gonna he's gonna be he gonna have sticky coverage all the way down the field we know that but in a case like this when you know cater is not on that level you need to play man adjust your scheme you know and we didn't do that um and i get it you know in the zone it allows you know the it allows us to be able to prevent the big chunk plays deep down the field on deep bombs and it allows our cornerbacks to also jump the underneath routes. Maybe we can get turnovers and interceptions that way. And, you know, we can come up in a run game, come up and make a tackle. Our DBs can do that in this zone, you know. And sometimes Josh Boy and Flores ran zone. But you also seen a lot of times where they, depending on the team, the game plan was to play press man coverage. Whatever happened to bump and run? Why are teams not playing? I'm seeing our teams all across the league with their corners five and 10 yards off of the, the wide receiver, giving them all this spacing, you know, all over the field, all over the real estate. Like, I'm not, I don't understand that. And all this talk about the window closing for the Bills to win a Super Bowl is dumb talk because we saw this game, the window's wide open. It's still open for them. Allen and Diggs, they've been the best combo in the league. Second of them has been Kirk Cousins and Jefferson. I'm pretty sure Tua and Tyreek are in that conversation as well. And the whole, but the whole Bills Mafia offense with Gabe Davis and Shakir, they made a statement this game that they're still here. We still have to find a way to, to, to beat them and stop what they're doing because we haven't stopped nothing for the last five years. Even though even, even the game we won, we didn't stop them. We just won, you know, and right now this win helps them lead the division they're three and one we got the same record as them both got divisional wins but we beat the patriots and they beat us and that's how they got over even though our records are the same let's break down this game uh first quarter uh, we won the toss but deferred jason sanders did a great job of kicking a touchback to start 
and they made a few short completions and a nice run with James uh, Cook. At 12 minutes and 55 seconds, Josh Allen completes a play action pass from under center and Cater Cole who gets a personal foul a 15 yard penalty. I told y'all in the keys to victory on defense that if Josh Allen gets under center, most of the times, 90% of the times or 80% of the times, he's gonna do a play action pass. Every now and then they'll hand the ball off on a run play from under center, but they mostly, they run almost everything out of shotgun. You know, even their running plays out of shotgun with him acting like he's going to do a quarterback power and handing it off and you confused and don't know what's happening. Next thing you know, they got they had Zach Moss last year busting one off of those runs on us. This year, they got James Cook doing that. And they also got the other staple of backs, you know, fooling defenses because you got to worry about Josh. And uh, next play, Allen throws a deep play action pass, a touchdown to Gabe Davis on the right side. Perfect throw. They're up seven, uh, zero to seven. Allen was also perfect on that drive going four for four, 45 yards. Offense on the field. Uh, Tua uh, with 10 minutes and 36 seconds on the clock, he went to Smythe on back-to-back -back plays. One of them was a chunk play, which was good. And I'm thinking at this point, brilliant idea you know the first game we beat teams we beat the charges through the air then uh the patriots you know in, in week three we beat them with the running game this game let's fool them with the tight ends let's go to our, our you know dual tight end sets ace formations that's good that'll give even the, the, the teams we got to play in week five six five six or seven something else to worry about besides tyreek hill and besides devon a chain now they got to worry about the tight ends i'm thinking we're going to go to julian hill this game but we didn't uh six minutes and 35 seconds devon a chain runs it in for a touchdown all made happen by a nice block by durham eight durham smite i think he hit the guy a rap you know, with a nice block, and that made it possible. That made the score seven to seven. Defense on the field, five minutes and 50 seconds on the clock. Allen completes an out route to Dawson Knox. Holland, he read it. He was right there on the play, but Dawson Knox put the truck stick on him. And uh, at three minutes and 11 seconds, we let Latavius Murray break a long run, almost to pay dirt, but he got stopped at the 13 yard line. The Bills went to hurry up on several run attempts inside the five with James Cook and they scored to make it seven to 14. Um, second quarter, uh, the notes that I took for the second, Tua drops a dime to most of between two defenders to start the second. 13 minutes and 30 seconds, Tua makes a pass to Berrios and then at 12, 47, A-Chain had a nice run for six. McDaniel had him fooled on a nice design run play with Tyree Kill acting like he's the running back in the backfield. And then they run a running back reverse to A-Chain to the left who did the rest. Defense on the field with 12 minutes and 34 seconds left. Uh, we get a pass interference call, which is a bullshit call to me. It was off of a bomb attempt from Allen and Diggs. Kohu was covering. The reason why I call it BS because they was both hand fighting. Kohu got a right to the ball just like Allen. And it's not like his hand fighting was impeding the receiver. You know what I mean? I mean, you, you, who's, who are you going to call it on? They both doing the same thing. No, he didn't get his head turned around, but he was still in good position. He just played sticky coverage, and they called it. was a dumb call. That gave him great field position, put him right there at the red zone. And there, another reason why I call it BS, reason number two, was because the following play, Allen threw a fade to the to the, the back of the end zone in the corner, and Kohu basically played the same coverage. He was hand fighting, didn't get his head turned around. They didn't call it, you know, so they didn't throw the flag. Uh, but that made the score uh, 14 to 21. Uh, Allen, he threw a pass to Diggs. He, that's what made the score 14 21. Offense has a, has a chance to try to tie it again. Uh, we get an illegal formation penalty that set us back five yards. Then on third and 18, we tried to run a running back screen to Raheem, but he fumbled at the 39. Luckily, we recovered it because that would have been a disaster early. And we officially became the first team to punt in the game with the score 14 to 21. Uh, they, on their drive, they also punted, you know. Uh, Zach Siler had a good tackle for loss and then at 5 minutes and 37 seconds the defense forced a 3 and out that's when they punted but see because they had good field position where they were at 
Martin was able to punt it and drop it at the five yard line and they got it to the two and that put us in bad field position. Offense is on the field. Uh, Teron Armstead at three minutes and 59 seconds got hurt. He was laying on the turf with a leg injury. He ended up limping off the field to the locker room. Um, shout out to Teron Armstead for trying. Like he gave it his all to try to play for us. He had nagging injuries, multiple injuries. He definitely was a lead on his O line, but I think I think it's that time right now where we need to roll with Kendall Lamb for the rest of the year. Just roll with him. You know, I, I'm confident that he'll be able to get the job done. So he looked good in the Chargers game. So I'm confident. Let's just roll with him. Uh, back on the field was the defense. We're still playing zone with three minutes and 51 seconds left in the second. Diggs scored a touchdown on the run after catch on Cole, who got called for a legal contact. Now we down 14-28. Offense on the field, two almost throws an interception, but Tredavious White dropped it. And next play, we tossed it to Mostert right, and he fumbled it from a, a linebacker, uh, Matt Milano, punching it out, and that that hurt us. Now the defense, they, they got their backs to the wall, and they're on the field. Van Ginkle had a nice sack, and then Justin Bethel had good coverage on slot wide receiver uh, Khalil Shakir on a bomb attempt. Allen tried to go deep to him on the right sideline, but Bethel got a hand in. And he deflected it. That made it forced down, and that forced them to kick a field goal. But that made the score 14 to 31. Uh, one minute and 44 left. Still in the second, we got a chance to try to score before the half, but we don't get it done. Tua got sacked by Greg Russo, and we punt it before the half. You saw O line coach uh, Butch Berry talking to the lineman like he was trying to coach him up on something because our protection was starting to break late into the second. And I'm thinking in my mind, like, okay, we get the ball back at halftime. Uh, we down 17 points. If we don't score and they score, it's pretty much over and we're in trouble. And that's pretty much what happened. Uh, we didn't score at the end to end the half. But at this point, two was 14 for 18, 155 yards. No touchdowns, no interceptions, even though we almost threw one. Josh, on the other hand, completed 14 to 17 passes at half. 201 yards, three touchdowns, and so far the Bills, they looking like they're going to drop a 70 burger on us. Third quarter, uh, A-Chain is in that running back. We completed a pass to Waddle that got us in Bills' red zone territory, and at this point, uh, this like his first or second catch because he was MIA the first half, and then Ed Oliver uh, got hurt on a run play but came back. Two of those are Dom to Berrios over DBs in the end zone, to get us uh, another score. And he did a great job of holding the safety with his eyes, finding Braxton accurately uh, to make the score 20 to 31. But we failed the two point conversion, so that's why it wasn't 21 31. Defense on the field, uh, we allowed Josh Allen to complete the yak pass to James Cook, who almost takes it to the house, but we stopped him and, and that forced the fourth down, but they kicked the field goal to make it 20 34. Uh, five minutes and, third, and three seconds left in the third. Tua with an interception to Micah Hyde. Trying to go to Robbie Chosen, but he threw the ball too high. And it looked like Chosen just wasn't ready for it, and it got picked. Three minutes and 30 seconds left. Steven Diggs catches another touchdown again over Cater with a, you know, from a 25-yard pass. Now we're down 20 to 41. Three, uh, 39 seconds left in the third. Ed Oliver sacked Tua uh, to stop us from converting to fourth and one. And this play is an example of what I've been saying about uh, Christian Wilkins in regards to him getting a big, you know, you know, really high expensive contract. Like, if you're trying to compare yourself to other D linemen, Christian, you got to make game wrecking plays like this when it matters. Yeah, you make those plays, but they're few and far between and they're not in clutch moments in the game. We need you to get these sacks, tackles for loss, in clutch moments in the games when it mattered. If you do that, you'll be able to get that contract that you're looking for. Um, he's more productive than Ed Oliver number-wise, but when it comes to wrecking games, same Quentin Williams, he wrecks games. He's a wrecking ball. Fourth quarter, the start of the fourth was not good at all because we let Josh Allen run it in for six, and at this point, the game has gotten away from us at 20 to 48. At this point, we got Hill and Waddle on the sidelines. Josh Allen called his brother from the sidelines to fill in for him. Kyle Allen, that's not his real brother, but Kyle Allen came in, and you could tell his only job was to run the clock out, and that's what they did for the final score, which was 20 to 48. 
Let's go over the game stats on numbers lie, numbers don't. Quarterback to attack of our Lord completed 35 of 35, 25 of 35 passes, uh, 25 of 35 for 282 yards, one touchdown, one pick, almost two, got sacked four times and lost 31 yards, but uh, he had a quarterback rating of 92.8. On the turf, Raheem Mostert, uh, who scored four touchdowns and looked amazing last game. He looked pedestrian this game. He fumbled the bag twice and just looked like a different player. He finished the game with seven carries for a measly nine yards. A-Chain, on the other hand, he looked like he's still with the program. He had eight carries for 101 yards, two TDs, and he looks like the real deal. 12.6 yards per carry, and I would say at this point, Maybe we should start him as the as the starter over, over Raheem and have Raheem rotate in. Tyreek Berrios and Reek gained a few yards on the ground also. So our overall numbers was 19 carries for 142 total. With the aerial production, eight receivers caught passes. None of them came close to 100. That includes Tyreek. And neither of, them, neither of them caught more than six passes. I would say Berrios was kind of the leading receiver this game, you know, because he got the touchdown, you know, and he, he, he kind of... Surprisingly, in my opinion, from my eyes, he was the he was a, a good factor for us, more of a factor in the passing game. Him and Waddle, Tyreek could have played better. As far as the O line, they didn't play as well as they should have this game either. We allowed too much pressure. Liam Eichenberg got beat a few times, and just the whole outfit could have could have performed better. On defense, our numbers looked about the same as Buffalo's as far as tackles, PDs, and TFLs. But the difference was they had nine quarterback hits. We only had three. And it's like we barely touched uh, Josh. Like he had time. He had a lot of time to drink coffee back there at times. And we got two sacks, but it just wasn't enough. He was almost flawless the whole game. He completed 21 of 25 passes for 320 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. We didn't even come close to picking off a pass, you know, in this game. David Long led us in tackles with 10 total, seven solos, and two TFLs. But from my eyes, Andrew Van Ginkle was the most impactful. He had five tackles, four solos, two sacks, three TFLs, and two quarterback hits. My final thoughts on this game is it's three and one. We're three and one. We're still good. It's only been four games. The defense has to gel together with Vic Fangio's scheme quickly. And I think we we need Jalen Ramsey ASAP, man. We need him for this defense. As far as uh, the chess match between McDaniel and Sean McDermott, obviously Sean outcoached and outsmarted uh, McDaniel. He gave us problems with his palms coverage. And for those that don't know what palms coverage is, basically it's, it's a coverage that's designed to disrupt the timing of the offense. They, they disrupted the rhythm. That's what they did. Uh, making Tua hesitate, second guess, and go to his second and third reads. And I noticed, uh, I did my studying on this. Shap Boyd, which is the defensive coordinator at Muskingum College, he uses palm coverage in his defense. And basically what it does, it gives the DBs, the whole secondary, they get alerts and keys based on how we're lined up and what we're doing. The secondary, they free to make adjustments on the field anytime the offense comes out with a detached number two a receiver that can be a vertical threat, which is what Waddle is. And so a split field reads that they're both making, the corners and the secondary, I mean, and the uh, safeties. The corners reads are different from the safeties reads. For the corner, for, their, for the corners, their reads are pretty much uh, try and squeeze Tyreek Hill until Waddle crosses of the vertical. Don't chase, just use their quarter of the field. If both Waddle and Tyreek disappear they can squeeze waddle until he's running a post uh or a seam watch the quarterback through three steps before snapping the eyes back to tyreek and make sure that they flip their hips and skate and that's what they did the alerts for the safeties are play 12 to 15 yards off the ball and zone on top of waddle if waddle is going vertical lock in on him if he's going if he's doing an out route or a zig get eyes on Tyreek and if he drags the eyes go to Tua and then they find work from there the will linebacker he's supposed to wall off Waddle and look at Tyreek and expand for whoever the number three is on the pickup 
What does all these alerts and rules pretty much tell us that the game plan was to take Waddle specifically out of the game? They want to try to prevent them post, them deep post bombs that we threw in week three. That's what they trying to stop, and that's pretty much what they did. Waddle did make some catches, but they they were they they was okay with that. They they wanted to live with that. Um, and we got to get this solved because they're gonna start saying how the Bills found out a blueprint on how to stop us, and we got to have adjustments. This is the reason why. I made the Tua's new playbook series, which you can find on the channel by looking at these thumbnails right here. On those videos, I discuss how we gotta be adaptable. We gotta adapt our schemes and we gotta be able to morph into other things just in case they stop what McDaniel wants to do with his base package. Yeah, we should run the exotic McDaniel West Coast, but I think we should also mix in the traditional West Coast schemes because sometimes we gonna need it. Sometimes we're gonna to need to switch to more of a power scheme. So far and near, weak and strong, that's gonna work. Stretch run plays, you know, count, uh, counter trays. We gotta run those. Single back ace formations, we gotta run those. We can't run it because Smythe is good at what he does, but we need another tight end to run them drag routes. That's, that, that's a staple in the West Coast. Um, and I also think that Chris Brooks got to get more touches in the game. We got to get the power game running early, Get start practicing that and getting ready for these cold weather games that we're going to have where we're going to need to run power because teams are going to try to figure out what we're doing. Look at what the Bills did to us this game. They didn't just rely on James Cook and Damian Harris. They, they put Latavius Murray, they power back out there, and he made impactful plays to beat us this game. Um, in the secondary... We got to try to find answers in the slot because Khalil Shakir hurt us. And, you know, we also committed too many penalties this game. On special teams, I think A-Chain should be our primary returner, both punt and kickoff, because Berrios is good, but we need a game-breaker there at that spot. Somebody that got some wiggle, and D Devon A-Chain has that. Here's my big fish ballers for week four. Uh, quarterback Tua Tagovailoa is on that list. Running back Devon A-Chain. Fullback Alec Ingold. Tight end Durham Smythe. Wide receiver Braxton Berrios. Uh, linebacker David Long Jr. Safety Javon Holland. Andrew Van Ginkle and Justin Bethel was on that list. And I'll put Jason Sanders on there too. The next three weeks are against NFC teams. Uh, next week, we play the Giants at the Rock. They're, they're one and two, and they're going to be facing the Seahawks tonight on Monday Night Football. After that, we play the Panthers at home. Then we travel to Philly to challenge the Eagles before our second bout against the Pats. If we can go at least two and one during that stretch, it'll give us a five and two record. Obviously, six and one is what we're shooting for, but we got to see how it goes. Before I go, I want to answer the question. Did we fumble the division? No, we did not because we didn't have it. Buffalo, they continued to dominate us just like Ric Flair said. If you want to beat a man, you got to beat the man. And until we go up there and beat them in their house, we haven't proven that we could beat the man. I don't give a damn about week three. That didn't prove enough. We got to beat them. We got to beat them this next game to split the, to split the series. And we got, we got to show that we could dominate. But that's all I got. Y'all let me know what y'all thought thoughts are in the comment section about the game about this whole season about the defense till next time signing off